Hi there, this is Vivs here. In this video, we are going to talk about the basic stuff that makes up your computer. First, let's start with the structure of your computer internally. Now there are several parts here that you can see. Let me walk you guys through some of them. Now one set of devices form the input unit. Now the input unit in our case happens to be keyboard and mouse. And there are other types of devices such as voice commands, image scanners, barcode readers, DVD drives, Blu-ray disk drives, USB drives, flash drives, webcam and so on. Now newer types of devices also include GPS devices, accelerometers and game controllers that you can connect with your system. Now all these devices basically get input or some data from the user. Now obviously the other category of devices would include output devices which here would be display and printer and of course there are other types of output devices such as touch screens, media players, hard drives, DVD drives and again USB flash drives. Now there are two types of memory as well, one of them being the main memory which you guys often remember as RAM and the other being secondary storage. Now whatever is there in the main memory gets destroyed when the computer is turned off but whatever is there in the secondary storage is retained otherwise. However, the main memory is much faster to access and work with compared to the secondary memory. So the next item of interest would be your CPU which is composed of several things. Now ALU stands for Arithmetic Logic Unit. It is responsible for doing stuff like addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. It also lets you do decision based items like maybe check if two prices are equal or greater or less than each other. So to give you a bigger picture, let's say you're making an app that calculates taxes. In that case, you will be entering the amount on which you want to compute taxes with the help of the keyboard and the mouse. Now the program that you write will be stored on your hard drive in secondary storage. But the program is basically a set of lines that you must run on your computer. And those lines will be loaded into your main memory. And from there all calculations would be performed in the ALU or CPU. And you will get the results either on your display or printer. And this is how the whole thing will work together. And the bus is exactly what it sounds like. It's like a real world bus that transports data between all these different units. Now let's take a look at how data is actually stored. At the lowest level, your computer can store 0 or 1. So that brings the question, how do you store an alphabet such as the letter V? Now there is a way this is possible. The letter is first converted into a number. The number is converted into binary and that binary number is stored on the computer. So how do we know which number to convert to? And that is done with the help of a table called Unicode. This table Unicode simply shows which letter should be converted to what number. So Unicode letter V would look something like this in binary. Now you can have the entire name Vivs stored on the computer by converting each of these letters to their respective numbers with the help of the Unicode table and then store those numbers in binary format. Now this is called a field where you store one single aspect such as the name or a place or something. And there is of course a record which includes several fields. For example, you can have the name of a person and a person's age as a single record. And a file is ultimately a collection of records. Now remember there are several types of files. Now this is an organized or structured file that stores records. Now there are binary files that store images. So let's move towards the last part of this video where we talk about the different types of programming languages. Now a programming language is simply a language that a computer understands in which you can tell your computer to do something for you. There are three types machine, assembly and high level. Now the machine level looks somewhat like this. It is not human friendly and it is basically binary instructions. When you talk about assembly level language, they are somewhat human friendly where you can say load something, add something, store something. 
but a high level programming language is where you can really work with the computer in getting something done and it is human friendly at the same time now since each computer or device has different hardware a particular machine can understand only its own machine language when you talk about assembly level language however what happens is that you take these instructions which look human friendly and then you convert them into machine level language for that particular machine and high level languages go one step further so when it comes to assembly level language a set of programs that convert this code into the machine level code are called assemblers whereas when it comes to high level language a set of programs that convert this code into machine level language are called compilers so when we talk about java in the upcoming videos java is basically a high level language and it uses a compiler to convert these human friendly sentences or instructions into machine level language for that particular machine and that concludes our discussion on the structure of computers how data is stored and what types of programming languages exist now at the end of this video i have the section called googleables where you can google some of the things out the best way to learn programming is by googling certain things so be sure to type these things on google and learn more about them from stack overflow and other relevant websites thanks for watching i'll see you guys in the next video have a nice day